In this video, I'm going to give you guys a step-by-step -step guide on the best settings to use in Apex Legends Mobile. I'm going to break down every small setting so you can play like a pro and hit nasty shots like this. Or like this. Make sure you like and subscribe and let's get into it. My legs are ready to go. Some assembly required. Okay guys, so before we even start, for you Android users, I'm going to show you a quick tip to get 60 FPS gameplay on any game on your mobile device to make it run a lot smoother. First thing you want to do is head into your settings, scroll right down to the bottom, and go to About Phone. You'll see an option for Build Number. All you need to do is hit this seven times. If you hit that seven times, it will unlock Developer Options, which are basically some secret FBI options that aren't available on the standard phone. Once you're in there, you want to scroll down and find the option Background Process Limit. You want to click this and you want to at most four processors at one time this will make your phone a lot smoother and it'll make it a lot easier to get more hertz on the phone as well one more option you want to quickly go for as well is force four times msaa make sure that is turned on this enables opengl es 2.0 apps and makes your phone run a lot smoother for gaming as well the next tip which a lot of you guys will already know already is you want to make sure that you've got no apps running in the background when you're playing apex legends mobile so literally you want to just clear every single app possible okay Unfortunately, there's no extra options for iOS, but for you Android users, use those tips, and now let's get into the settings. Hi guys, welcome back to another video, and I know Apex Legends Mobile can be hard to get used to, but following every setting that I'm about to show you should help you play 100 times better, so let's get into it. Alright guys, the basic settings. So I'm going to run through everything step by step right now. Auto firing. You're going to want to turn this off. Auto firing means that when your cursor is over an enemy, you don't need to press the fire button in order to shoot them. Now you don't want this on because it's going to be super hard and the game is slightly buggy when you use an auto fire. So turn this off. If you're brand new and not very good at the game, then keep it on just to, you know, learn the ropes and improve your aim. Left fire button, you're going to want to keep this off. This basically means when you're aiming down the sights, it will bring up an extra button on your screen, which you really don't need. So turn that off. One one tap ADS and fire. Now, this honestly depends on exactly how your playstyle is. Now, with the fire button, if you have this off, then you have to automatically press the scope button and then press the fire button in order to start shooting. Another option to have is mixed, where all you need to do is press down the fire button and you will automatically aim down the sights and fire at the same time. I'd recommend having this off and having a separate aimed out sights button just to make it easier. Bolt action sniper mode. Tap to fire basically means that you need to tap the fire button in order to shoot. Release to fire basically means you have to tap down the fire button and then let it go in order to shoot entirely up to you i like to use release to fire same thing goes with the shotgun as well i would keep that on tap to fire because you do need to aim down sights with the shotgun it's a lot easier with the mastiff and the peacekeeper ads mode tap hold or mixed that's entirely up to you if you want to hold down the aim down sight button in order to shoot do that but tapping it is a lot easier depending on your hud style which i'll cover in a future video ads button rotates camera you want to turn this off this really throws you off when you're trying to aim down the sights now if you click more options at the bottom this is where it gets quite interesting okay these are the intricate details that you're going to need to change. So aim assist, entirely up to you if you want to on or off. The aim assist is, isn't as powerful as it was in the beta. So I would recommend having it on if you're new to the game. Or if you really want to learn how to aim better, then I would have it off. But most people are going to have it on regardless because you can beam people with it. TPP optic, if you play in third person, you're going to want to have that as classic. The shoulder mode is really, really bad. And the hybrid mode is probably worse. So keep this as classic. You don't really need to change anything about that. But if you're playing in third person anyway, then... Yeah. Now, auto open doors, definitely have that off, especially when you're running away from the enemy and you want to hide behind the door. You want to have that off. Otherwise, when you're in a fight and you're trying to door fight with someone, it's going to keep swinging open and closing. So make sure you have that turned off. Auto open chests, I have that on because it makes it a lot easier and quicker. Weapon auto cycle on empty means that whenever your mag is empty or you have no ammo in a specific gun, it will automatically change to the other gun with the ammo in. So up to you if you want to have that on or not. Continuous throw in, definitely have on. It makes it a lot quicker and a lot easier to throw grenades. Now, tactical and ultimate abilities release methods you want to have both of these on classic if you've got them on quick you will use them way too quickly and it will really throw you off and you only need to press the button once in order to use them so have both of these set to classic uh, allow squad mate control when you're offline entirely up to you if you've got a third that's you know lagged out or not playing the game then just have that on and you can automatically control them which is a pretty cool feature now there's also a light setup button on the top left this is for beginners so if you are new to the game you can automatically have all of these settings on the light setup but follow my advanced guide and it'll make you play a lot better now let's check out the gameplay settings
All right, the basics. Joystick triggers auto run. You're going to want to have this on. If you're lazy like me, you can literally just flick up the joystick and you can automatically run, which is a cool feature. Crouching controls is up to you. If you want to hold the button into crouch, then go for it. If you want to tap it, then go for it. Makes no difference. Crouching controls, you're definitely want to going to have that on tap. There's some movements in the game, like tap strafing and stuff that you can use with it on tap. So I'll go over that in a future video as well, but keep that on tap. Slide jump control, have it on classic. If you've got it on easy, it will make it quite jittery and quite laggy when you're jumping and trying to move in the air. So have that on classic as well. And then the bottom two, use the crouch and a jump button to rotate the camera. You don't need that on anyway, because you've got the little eye feature. So just turn those off. Climbing control mode and climbing prompt, have it on classic and off. You're not going to want anything on the screen when you're trying to climb a wall and you want to see your surroundings. And the climbing control mode is a lot easier on classic. Now zip lines. This is where it gets a bit hard because a lot of people are wondering how the how to use zip lines because they're quite hard to use in the game. With these exact settings, just copy them there and there, you can tap strafe up a zip, making it so hard for any enemies to shoot you. So copy these exact zip line settings I've got here and it'll be so much easier to use them, trust me. Okay, so the items tab at the top, smart health re item recommendation, you're going to want to have that on. That basically helps, uh, you know, when you're healing, the game will automatically give you an option of what kind of health you need at that time. So I would have that on. It makes it a lot easier. Toggle to use health items. You're going to want to have that on. That gives you a rotate wheel on the health items to make it easier to select them when you're in the middle of a fight. Continuously use health items. Have that off. Definitely. You don't want to keep continuously using the same health item, especially when you need to cancel in the middle of a fight. So turn that off. Same thing with the shield battery as well. Now attachment backpack. You're only going to want to have the optic one grayed out. That basically means that whenever you run over a scope, it doesn't automatically attach to your weapon. You're not going to want to run over a scope with your shotgun and whack a 3x on the freaking shotgun without even knowing when you get it out. So yeah, just turn that off. Everything else you can keep orange because it'll automatically equip those attachments to your weapon. Okay, now the pickup tab. Taking damage automatically closes death box. That means when you're looting a death box, if you take some damage, then that will close and you'll have to reopen it. Just turn that off. And if you're receiving damage when you're looting, just try to learn to automatically close it yourself. Switch item mode, you can have that on tap. Auto pickup settings as well. You're going to have auto pickup on because this game actually allows you to customize whatever you want to pick up, which I'll go over in a second. Uh, the auto pickup interval, you're going to want to have that short. It will make it very precise and very quick on picking up items and weapons so you can loot a lot quicker. And then when pickup list is closed, stop auto pickup. You're going to have that on as well. It makes things a lot quicker in the transitions. Now the consumables. You can copy mine just here if you really want to. This basically means that the game will limit whatever you are picking up automatically. So whenever I run over any boxes, if I've got four syringes in my inventory, then it won't pick up anymore. It'll be maxed at four. So the only other thing you want to change on here is the frag, thermite, and arc style. You want to put those to one because you're always going to want to automatically pick up some grenades. The ammo you can also reduce down as well. I've got shotgun ammo on 24 and sniper on 64, but again, it's your personal preference. You can copy my details if you want to. Lastly, ping. There's a lot of pings that happen in the game, which means when there's an enemy nearby, your character will automatically ping an enemy. Make sure you got that off. It's really annoying for your teammates. There's a ping button on the HUD that you can use automatically yourself. Same thing with auto ping items as well. There's an option in the game that you can automatically ping items when you've got the list open. So turn that off as well. Copy the rest of my settings on here because you don't really need to change anything else. I won't go into too much detail on the battlefield info. There's not too much I've changed on here. The only thing I've changed is the minimap rotation to have it on because it makes it a lot easier to see where you are on the minimap. And the map radar alert makes sure you've got that on as well. Everything else you can pretty much just copy to the T. The only other really important thing on here is the damage number numbers display modes. Now, if you've got that as floating, it makes it so when you're shooting an enemy, the damage numbers will basically just float above the enemy, which actually gives you more sight so you can see the enemy a lot easier when you're shooting them. So make sure you have that on floating. That's very important. All right, that's the gameplay settings. Let's move on to the controls. Now, there's two different interfaces on the controls. If you go for control interface 2, this will make it the new hybrid mode instead of the classic mode from the betas. The control mode I use is left movement, right fire fixed. That makes it a lot easier. So when you're moving around with your joystick on the left hand thumb, wherever the thumb is on the screen, it will move the joystick where that is. And then the right fire button, you don't want to have that moving all over the screen. So you want to have that fixed in position. So choose that left hand mode on control mode. Custom layout, depending on how many fingers you use to play the game, I will do this in a separate video. I use a five finger setup, three on the right hand, two on the left hand. If you use the same, feel free to copy these settings, but depending on how many fingers and thumbs you use, you're probably going to want to change that to yourself. So feel free to copy mine, but I'll go over it in a future video. Now, the most important thing, sensitivity. 
Okay, this is again going to be to your personal preference. We've all got small, large, medium, different devices. We all use multiple different fingers. So the sensitivities going to be a lot different on a lot of different devices. I'm using an iPad M1 2021. So the only things you really need to change on here is the sensitivity acceleration mode. You have this at a fixed speed. It will cap your speed to make it so much easier to swipe across the screen and aim at enemies. Next is the overall sensitivity presets. You're going to always want to have this on custom and set up your own. I recommend going into the firing range to just meddle around with it and sort it out yourself. But for mine, I'm just going to scroll down and feel free to copy these. If they work out for you, then brilliant. If they don't, then not brilliant. You don't really need to go over 150%. Anything over that, it gets way too fast and impossible to aim. Also, make sure that you've set all of your optics as well to the correct sensitivity. You've Again, feel free to use mine if it makes it a lot easier for you. And let me know in the comments if you've got any questions on sensitivity and I'll make a separate video detailing everything for you. All right, lastly is the graphics. Graphics are going to be to your personal preferences, depending on what device you've got. You know, have you know your old grandma's Nokia, you might have one of the brand new iPads or the brand new Red Magics. Some of these graphics and frame rate options aren't going to show up on your device, but some of them will. So the main thing you want to aim for is the highest FPS as possible. So you always want to set the FPS and the frame rate to the highest that your device can handle. A lot of the devices are going to overheat, so you need to find ways to keep them cool, or if they are overheating, then just drop the frame rate slightly by one. Same with the graphics quality as well. If you find that your device is overheating a bit, just drop the graphics quality slightly down. Now, for the iPad that I'm using just to get the best FPS possible, I actually use normal graphics. You don't really need to go up higher than that unless you want some, you know, colorful, vibrant textures. And my frame rate is always going to be on ultra, which gives me straight 60 FPS gameplay. Display FPS, have that on if you want to. The FOV on both FPP first person and TPP third person have those maxed out 110 FOV. This means field of view. It basically stretches the gameplay, which makes it easier to see, and it opens a lot more to see as well. So have both of those on maximum 110. The only other setting I've changed on here is the color blind mode. Have Tritonopia on. The preset will be Protonopia, but Tritonopia makes it actually easier to see enemies because it gives more color and more vibrancy to the game. Camera and audio, I mean, they're self-explanatory. Depends if you want some audio or some, you know, better audio, it's entirely up to you. Controller settings, I'm actually not gonna get into this video because, you know, I don't use controller myself. I've never used controller, so I can't give you good advice on that. Let me know in the comments if you want me to make a controller settings video and I'll learn how to do it and get all the right guides for you. So that's basically an in-depth settings guide for all of you guys. Now, I know a lot of you guys will be saying, you know, I haven't got the same settings as you. That's probably because of your device check out here. This is going to give you all of the device minimum requirements that you actually need to play this game. I hope this settings video has actually helped you a lot. If it has, be sure to like and subscribe. And again, any questions at all, make sure you drop a comment down below and I'll be sure to answer it for you. And that's it guys. I've got so many more guides and so many more cool videos to come. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace!